Hello everyone, welcome to See Through. I'm Daria Akainak, engineer and oceanographer at Harbor Branch in Florida. I'm, I'm Tali Trebich, I'm heading the Marine Imaging Lab at the School of Marine Sciences, University of Haifa, Israel. Thanks for joining us. As a physics-based color reconstruction algorithm, See Through was published in CVPR 2019. But the breakthrough that led to it was an image formation model derived specifically for the ocean. We showed that the previously used model was formulated for the atmosphere and could not work well if attenuation was wavelength dependent. What led to a revised model was our meticulous investigation of attenuation coefficients. These papers make up three of the four underwater computer vision papers in CVPR in the last six years. Let's start with some results. If you first heard about see-through on the media, you might have thought it needs a color chart to work. It doesn't. Even if you had one color chart in the scene, it wouldn't be enough to do a proper color correction. I'll explain why later. It also doesn't need the scene to be forward-facing. That's because it doesn't use watercolor at infinity to estimate air light. It requires natural light and linear images, but makes no assumptions about the optical water type. It's an RGBD method, so it takes range as input, which can come from any source. Here we use structure from motion. See-through also works for video, but the challenge there is to record with no in-camera enhancements and minimal compression. Why does the revised image formation model make such a difference? Remember that an underwater image is the sum of the scene with attenuated colors, the direct signal, and the backscattered signal, which is fog due to scattering from particles. Here's the old image formation model and how the direct and backscattered signals look for a Macbeth color chart. What makes it old is not its form, but that the coefficient in both the direct signal and the backscattered signal is the same. In the revised model they're different, and their dependencies on range, reflectance, ambient light, camera sensor, and water properties is explicitly shown. Let's look at a calibrated experiment where we have ground truth. Here's a color chart imaged from 8 meters to 30 centimeters. Using the gray patches we calculate and subtract backscatter. Notice how the layer of fog is now gone. Using the color patches we calculate attenuation. Now the light in all the images is standardized. These are the attenuation coefficients and the backscatter coefficient from this calibrated example. There's one attenuation coefficient for each color and they all vary with range C. The backscatter coefficient is constant for the scene, it's the black line on the bottom, and it does not vary strongly with range. The old atmospheric image formation model assumed the attenuation and the backscatter coefficients to be the same and to be a constant for the entire scene. Remember how I said one color chart wouldn't help? Backscatter changes with distance and the attenuation coefficient changes with distance. Unless everything in the scene is at the same range, you would need a minimum of two color charts at two different distances. When we have more than one color chart in the scene, we can easily extract these coefficients and apply them to correct the colors in the image. But in real life, we don't have color charts in the scene and that's where see-through comes in. See-through is the first method to use the revised underwater image formation model. It takes range as input. It estimates backscatter using the darkest pixels in the image, similar to dark channel prior, but not the same. First, it knows range, it doesn't have to compute it. And second, it takes pixels that are dark simultaneously in all three channels, rather than the darkest in any given channel. Then it computes an estimate of spatially varying illumination from which it calculates the attenuation coefficient. Finally, photo finishes. Please have a look at the papers for details. Thank you.